We are God's Church of Love online every Saturday and Tuesday. Details below in the description box. Now we're dealing with going through. And we're dealing with the sufferings of this world. And there are a lot of people suffering right now. So we're going to refer to what they're suffering with as the big C. All right. Because I noticed YouTube sabotages videos when it comes to mentioning that word. So anyway, we are going to read Romans chapter 8 going down to verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For when he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also he called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Right? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intersection for us? Who shall separate us? This is the one I want you to hear right here. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Hmm. Think about it. See, a lot of times people think when things go wrong that God takes a vacation because he's a fair weather friend. Wow. Or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, listen to this. I'm going to share a dream because I want to show you something a lot of you are going through now. Some of you have gone through some serious trauma, some serious bitter anguish when you were just children. And I want you to know something. Before you knew there was a God, God knew what was happening with you. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Now, the Lord gave me a dream, and I don't know who this is for on YouTube or in our group. I don't know who this is for. But I want you to know that God knows. He knows how we get victimized. We get victimized through sickness. We get victimized through neglect. We get victimized through abuse. Some of us get victimized through molestation and rape. Some of us get victimized by physical abuse. So I want you to hear this because I want you to know we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities. And a lot of times we think that it's one person that is wrong in the whole situation and nobody knows but you. But there are people who can be right in, in your sphere, who can be right in your family that know exactly what's going on with you. And they take pleasure. Now listen to this. In this dream, it's a weird dream. In this dream, this was a young teenager. 
She was with an uncle, uh, an older cousin, an older relative, a male. They were all normal family. And then all of a sudden, he got her alone. How it happened, that part I don't remember. But listen to this. He overpowered her. And she kept saying, don't touch me, get off of me. She was squealing and wiggling and writhing, trying to get out of his grip. But he overpowered her. The man raped her repeatedly. And it didn't just happen that one day. Now listen, listen to this. While he was raping her and she was screaming and hollering and begging him to stop, her aunt was outside of the building and she overheard the whole thing. You know what she did when she overheard the whole thing going down? Grandma was sitting up there laughing and grinning like she was really enjoying this. And see, the Bible says, don't celebrate somebody else's calamity. But this chick was celebrating. She was having fun. This thing was entertaining to her to listen to this girl begging this man to leave her alone. And it showed it happening twice where she overheard it twice, two different times. And she was just grinning. She was like, I got to show you the facial expression. It was like it was happening over here and she knew exactly where the room and the window was. And she was just like picturing what was going on. And she was just grinning like, enjoying it. She was basking in that crap. Now, trust me, there are people in your lives that want to see you hurt. They want to see you ride. They want to see you beg, plead, cry. Right. And they take extreme pleasure, very sadistic pleasure. Well, I want you to know I didn't know who these people are, but God does that with me a lot. He gives me dreams of things that are happening to someone else. So I want you to know, if he can give me a dream, he knows what's going on. God knows what's going on, plus he can undo that damage and heal that young lady's hurt if she gives a heart to him. And I say to you, if anything like that has ever happened to you, God can take away your shame, which is, there's no reason for it when you're victimized. God can take away your shame. God can take away your bitterness, your anger, your, your rage. He can take it out of your heart and uproot that mess so it no longer sabotages, cripples, or limits you. Now that's a memory, that's a bitter experience, that's a painful experience. Who knows if she would never marry again? Who knows if something like that would be pounced on and taken advantage of by demons of homosexuality to turn her in another direction? Who knows how that could happen? Who knows if it could turn her into a promiscuous woman because she feels like that's all she's worth? You have no idea the damage this stuff can do. But I am here to give you one bit of good news. Jesus Christ can uproot it. Jesus Christ can remove it. He can heal your pain. You may have never told anybody in your life, but I want you to know God knows. And he's waiting with bated breath for you to pour that into him for you to cry out to him and ask him to heal you, ask him to enable you to forgive, ask him to enable you to let it go. See, we go through stuff and a lot of us don't tell on a no-tell basis. You hide yours, I'll hide mine. I ain't going to get in your business. Don't, y'all, don't ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lie. We don't realize how many people out there are smiling over pain, pain, shame, humiliation. They're bound to the core 
And they know how to put on the masquerade and play it off. Hey, they know how to play it off. Oh, what a wonderful day. How have you been? They know how to play it off. While they wish they could crawl out of under a rock and maybe go on and just commit suicide and get it over with. Well, I bind and rebuke that spirit of suicide because God has a purpose for your life. There are some of you who have lost people to the big C. And you're wondering, well, where was God? God was with them. Trust me. A man doesn't die alone without God being there. Now, the problem is that they don't know God, they can't see God. And if they don't cry out to him, they won't. There are a few exceptions because God is merciful, especially to the merciful. So, this is what I want to ask you to do. Don't lose heart. Don't throw in the towel. Don't blame God. This is not God's doing. This is all man and his mess. Greed, treachery, all kind of mess going down. But I want to share this with you. God can undo whatever losses you had in your life. God can take the hole in your soul and fill it with his love, with his comfort. God can take that fear that's got you tied up in knots, that's got you losing sleep at night. He can give you peace that passes all understanding. God can take the pain of loss. He can take the anguish that you're going through. The sleepless nights, the restless nights. Some of you are claustrophobic. Some of you have all kind of fears. Fears of being alone, fears of being sick, fears of dying, fears of whatever. You've got these fears and you're on, lo on lockdown and you're hurting and you're restless and you don't know what to do. This is the perfect time to cry out to God. God can do the, the miraculous. You're not alone. See, that's the part we forget. When the Bible says that no matter where we go, we can't go from his love. You're not alone. Emmanuel, God with us. He's with us. You're not in your business alone. You're not in your financial struggle alone. You're not dealing with loss alone. Not at all. When, when my father passed away, I was at the park after we finalized everything that night that, that he died. My sister, my niece, and I went to Farnsworth Park. We sat up and watched the sun come up. Now, check it out. I found out what the Bible meant when it said, he'll give us peace that passes all understanding. My father and I were thick as thieves. We were we were close. He was my daddy. I was a daddy's girl. He was my champion. He was my hero. But let me tell you this. I felt, and I was explaining it to my niece and my sister, in the middle of all that morning, I felt as if I was suspended out and out of space. And everything was perfectly still around me. It was the most bizarre experience. And I told my niece, I said, I'm not hurting. It went away. Everything is perfectly still. Every, I feel like I'm suspended in outer space with no sound, no air, no movement. I never experienced that extreme level of peace. I already had the peace of God. But this was that peace that passes all understanding. God can override your tsunamis. God can override your earthquakes. Somebody feels like there's a serious shaking going on and they're afraid that everything in their life is going to collapse. I had that dream last night too. That's how I know. So let me share this with you. And I got to read it. Father, thank you. Pour your spirit out on this word, Father. 
in Jesus' name. Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of us. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Mm, 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 mm. I hope that comforts somebody. Come. Behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made me earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. And here's, here's for you. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Mm. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. There are times, there are times when I'm hurting. I want to share with you a little secret. Last night I was crying my eyes out. I wasn't crying because I was scared. I wasn't crying because I was because I was lonely. I wasn't crying for any of that. I was crying because I was frustrated. Lord, I'm trying to do this ministry for you. And it seems like everything, YouTube is sabotaging everything I do, no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try to put, to put some excellence together, no matter how long I spend hours and hours and hours and hours of editing and editing in and editing out and timing. And no matter what I do, it seems like it comes to nothing. It seems like it goes up in dust. And I'm tired of it, Lord. And I'm telling you, I cried, I cried, I cried, I complained, and I cried. I wasn't complaining about God. I was complaining about this internet crap. And you know, before I knew it, the Lord was just calming me down because I was crying to him. The Lord was calming me down, gave me uh messages on YouTube, T.D. Jakes and some others about not giving up, not being so quick to quit, not throwing in the towel out of frustration. You know, God, he knows how to keep you. He not only keeps you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. God is the lifter up of our heads. God will comfort those that mourn. God will give you beauty for ashes. That's the ministry. That's what he does. But you have to go to him while you're going through all this madness. Don't look to Trump. Don't look to the government. Don't look to Congress. Look up to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. He's the one that made heaven and earth and all the man that's in it. Look up to the hills. He's the lover of your soul. He's your comforter. He's your paraclete. He's always right there alongside. No matter what shaking, begging, he will still the noise. He will still the storm. He will calm the waves. He will remove your pain. But are you going to him? Are you asking him? Are you seeking him? There's so much God has to offer. You can't be delivered if you're not in a trick bag. You can't be healed if you're not sick. 
Think about it. He's showing you his side of the world. The world is ugly. The world is full of sin. The world is full of treachery. The world is full of fear. The world is full of loss. The world is full of all kind of torment, turmoil, and confusion. But God, but God, he's not only the light at the end of the tunnel, he's the light in your soul. <sighs> Seek God while he may be found. Cry out to him. The Bible says, pour your heart out to him. Don't try to handle this alone in your own strength. You're too puny. I'm too puny. When things get too big for you to deal with, <laughs> as, the, as the commercial said, too big to eat. If it's too big, go to the one who's in total control. He'll knock that thing back down to size for you so you can step over it and walk around it. And you can keep on trucking, baby. You won't have to sit down with your thumb in your mouth and tears running down your face and curling up in under a blanket saying, forget it. Stop the world. I want to get off of this mess. No, God will give you all the gasoline you need to keep you going. Keep on trucking, baby. That's right. Don't give up. You got to keep on trucking. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You're more than a conqueror. You're not a wimp. You're a conqueror. Don't lose hope. Please don't lose hope. Don't drop your faith because man and life has let you down. No, there are some people when they get so sick, they don't want to come back. They don't want to recover. They're asking God, Lord, can you just take me home? So don't get angry when your loved one dies and you've been praying for healing. You have no idea what their quiet prayer is. When my husband was on his deathbed, God showed me. He was looking up to me, begging me to understand in a dream. Baby, I'm so tired. I'm so tired, baby. All the years we've been married and dating, anytime something went wrong with him, baby, pray for me. Baby, pray for me. He was quick to get that prayer. But when he was on his deathbed and we both knew it, I told him, I said, if you want to be healed, tell me and we'll fight for your life. If you are tired, and you don't want to deal with anymore, and you're ready to go home, I won't pray for you to be healed because I don't live in your body. My husband never once asked me to pray for him to be healed. He was ready to go home. Some of you are not ready to let go. Some of it is God's mercy when he takes your loved one home. It ends the suffering, y'all. He's with us in birth. He's with us in life. He's with us in death. He's with us in eternity. If you make your bed in hell, God knows right where you are. He can see you. He's not off to see the wizard. He's an ever-present God. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at once. Be encouraged. You're not going through this alone, even if you feel alone and abandoned. You're not. God with us, Emmanuel. God bless you. I hope that comforts you somehow. Be encouraged and be safe. Amen.